Hi, this is your host Sapin Bhartia and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk. And today we have two guests, Sean Horan, VP of Sales at GXC and Craig Steen, CEO of JBI. Sean, Craig, it's had, great to have you both on the show. Yeah, thanks for inviting us. Yeah, good morning. I would love to hear a, a bit more about uh, JBI. Craig, can you just tell us a bit about the company? We are a company very focused in the food supply industry. And when I say food supply, I'm particularly talking about um, large integrators, companies like Tyson, Pilgrim Pride, uh, Smithfield Farms Foods, I should say, that are livestock producers. So um, the uniqueness uh, in this industry is uh, obviously livestock is not raised in downtown Salt Lake City or downtown Phoenix. Um, it's raised out in very rural areas. And consequently, a lot of the other operations like uh, protein meat processing is also going to be close by in very rural areas. That being said, we are a company, like I stated, that we really focus on this industry. And we find that there is a, no doubt, a lot of inefficiency in network connectivity. Um, it's one of the reasons in the last, really, uh, I was introduced to GXC probably about six months ago now. And it was the intrigueness that I have, and I really do have um, a very extensive technology and telecommunications background. And consequently got very intrigued, very interested in what GXC and um, started really formulating this partnership with Sean and with company as they launch um, into the enterprise space. And particularly my interest is due to the fact that we see in rural America a real need for this. Sean, we have been covering GXC on a regular basis, but it's a great opportunity to just remind folks what GXC is all about so we can go deeper and talk about this partnership. But before we talk about partnership, let's talk about GXC. Sure. So uh, appreciate the time. Thank you. Um, yeah, GXC, um, essentially, we are a private cellular uh, wireless solution provider. Okay. So what is that? That's really being able to deploy a cellular solution as you need it, or in other words, privately. So if an enterprise can launch a cellular solution, use the data that they have on site um, and keep it secure and being able to manage and operate that. We do that, um, uh, I think we do that particularly well. Um, and one of the big differentiators is right out of the box, it works. Uh, it's almost as simple as deploying a Wi-Fi solution, but you get all of the cellular benefits that uh, for encryption and uh, noise cancellation and interference cancellation and mobility and everything that you get in when you open up and use that box. Um, and so that's something that GXC has done. Um, one of the other differentiators for us is uh, Mesh, and we'll talk about that in the, pod in, in the podcast, but it's a kind of how we, we, we do that a little bit differently than others in the space. And um, so that's what we do. And uh, really, it's, I think, really well targeted towards the processors that are in rural areas that have problems with connectivity. And they can bring connectivity where they need it and want it. Um, and you talked about all those great, you know, uh, scanning devices and IoT devices and everything. Well, it's only as good as the connectivity to be able to bring that data into the cloud. And that's what we do. As you know, uh, Craig was really talking about, uh, uh, I also want to go a bit you know, deeper into this, this specific part, uh, par partnership between GXC and GVI. Talk about uh, the scope of this partnership. Our approach will be to, uh, in the, uh, let's say, customer base that we have existing out there in our business is really to go into really introducing the GXC solution. And Sean did a very good job there and really simplifying it. Um, 
in what the connectivity advantages that can be there and really to advance that. Um, we will also, in some cases, not only be just a provider of the solution, but very well also be a service and the installation side if need be. A lot of these very large food processors, and I gave an example of those uh, introduction, for example, like a Tyson, uh, very extensive IT, very extensive cybersecurity uh, concerns and protecting uh, that data network. And a lot of people may say, okay, well, I've got a bunch of chickens out on the farm. What do I need data for? Well, in operations of grazing and in production, for example, like chickens, um, there's a lot of data that needs to be collected on a daily basis. And there's a lot of environmental controls that need to be managed and alerts sent out if, if there is issues that are resulting in those operations. So just like Sean referenced, uh, not that um, there isn't uh, present day, there isn't other solutions out there, cellular reach, um, but there is limitations in rural areas, even in year 2023, where cellular reach can be just non-existent. Uh, broadband connectivity, again, there's presence out there, but there can be limitations. And I think what we've really got here with GXC, we've got the ability now to extend. So even if it is a mile down the road, for example, to this farm where connectivity needs to be present for data collection of various types of devices and operations, then now we have a very cost-effective and deployment that can be managed. Um, so partnership there, I think, is ideal. Um, we are in a very niche industry but we know it's a very important industry because as humans, what do we all got to do? We got to get up and we got to eat every day. Uh, we got to nourish our bodies. So it's an industry that will invest in technology. And um, like, like we've already stated, I'm very excited to be in a position in this partnership with GXC because I think we really can bring them uh, some opportunities and we really can service our customers in some inefficiencies and needs that they have. I also want to talk to, uh, to, to you, uh, Sean, a bit as, you know, Craig earlier mentioned talking about some of the challenges that are there, but here we are talking about, you know, uh, some specific challenge he was talking about, you know, what it has to do with the chickens in the farm. So talk a bit about when it comes to these kind of use cases, what are the connectivity challenges of, that are there, which are not just limited to the supply chain of food, but also the farm. So, so talk a bit about that and how GXC is kind of helping, you know, folks like Craig to, to kind of, you know, uh, serve an industry. I mean, as Craig alluded, um, you know, these uh, production facilities and farms are in rural areas. They're in areas that typically there's no one else there uh, due to environmental reasons, uh, uh, yeah, maybe people complain of smell and maybe the traffic that comes around it. So they're in areas that, you know, um, are, are not are underserved uh, by uh, the current structure in, in the United States, for example, uh, with the, you know, the three big carriers, um, the public, we call it the public, pro public, uh, the public cellular. Um, so you can't just pick up the phone and call a carrier and say, hey, can you put a tower up? you know, next to my farm because I can't connect my my applications that I need to use on a daily basis that are critical. Um, uh, it's the same thing that you see with, uh, you know, uh, ISPs uh, and, and broadband providers, right? Um, it's tough to get them to, you know, 
put put coverage where you need it in the connectivity. And so that's where we step in. Um, as long as you have a decent connection at the site, in other words, a um, you know some sort of form of a backhaul, uh, uh, an, an internet connection, um, you can set up a complete mobile you know cellular solution, private, and put it where you need it. And that's really where uh, where we shine. Um, we you you don't have to call anybody. You just get a node, uh, uh, set it up where we th- where you know you need coverage. Um, one example is like, for example, in a, uh, a a barn, right? And especially a large chicken facility that have multiple barns. Um, those are metal contained, uh, essentially Faraday cages. You know, there's metal roofs. There's metal. Uh, wires everywhere. There's there's uh, uh, meshing and everything, and you know, good luck getting a signal uh, on your cell phone, uh, you know, with your provider inside there. And how do you get that cellular signal inside of the inside of that barn? Well, you put it where you need it, and and that's really, hopefully, you know, that's where we see that the uh, that the GXC solution can solve those issues. Um, and it, it, it definitely makes it more efficient for, um, you know, the, the operator to be able to, you know, just manage it themselves and make it, make it available for, for what they need instead of having to rely on somebody else. Are there other challenges also? I mean, there are existing technology like Wi-Fi is there. Of course, you touched upon the, the, the public cellular networks. You're talking 5G also there. But are those technologies not sufficient for these kind of use cases? Wi-Fi is, is a great solution. And we, we differentiate between uh, carpeted areas and non-carpeted areas. So think industrial, uh, so offices or homes. Uh, cellular is, I mean, excuse me, Wi-Fi is great. Um, you know, you can connect up, uh, you know, the, the devices aren't moving very much. Um, they're in areas that are pretty conducive to, uh, to, to uh, you know, to withstand any interference because there is no real interference. Um, Wi-Fi in an industrial setting is a little bit different. How often can you, you know, there's uh, mobility on Wi-Fi going from one access point to another is is doesn't exist right so what you do is you typically flood a wi-fi solution multiple access points a lot of times there's interference there's uh um you know the 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 channel conflicts people can't connect indoors uh uh, and then we'll go outside and connect and vice versa going outside and connecting on a wi-fi solution so there's some limitations there um that um that are that are part of that solution and so people just seem to just add more access points instead of actually fixing the technology and providing a technology solution where uh, where uh, where needed. Um, and in, and obviously these are in areas that are um, you know not conducive to uh, to 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 uh, to radios, right? Um, you know the spectrum, uh, the noise, uh, the interference. You know, you like I mentioned that barn. That's a Faraday cage. You know you. You, you're basically isolated from the public network and getting signals to penetrate that um, even in even Wi-Fi, uh, it's 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 tough. Right. And so we, we believe that using Wi-Fi where you need it and then and complementing it with a private cellular solution um, actually in the industrial areas is actually the right approach. Um, and something that will solve, you know, help solve the headaches that they currently have. Talk about in these environments, uh, how is uh, GXC actually, you know, uh, helping solve this problem and being able to penetrate that for RF cage as well? So, give an example. Uh, so, on the mesh side, it, you, as you've noticed, it, you have a central access point and you have a couple of satellite nodes in your Wi-Fi home uh, for Wi-Fi mesh. Um, we do that with a, a mesh solution uh, over cellular today. Uh, we're the only one that are doing this, you know, in a, in a, in a commercial setting. Um, in other words, you actually extend coverage on the cellular channel uh, and you also do backhaul on that channel as well. And so we're doing that all uh, in, ex- in, what's the benefit? You know, you need to put that, let's say you need to put a node in an area that you can't take internet to. You know, you can't pull internet. It's going to be expensive to pull fiber or uh, an ethernet connection. Well, you can extend that coverage and plug the holes where, and put put the coverage where you need it with a uh, cellular mesh node, and all you need is power, right? And so you can extend that uh, very easily, cost effectively, and um, 
you know, that's, that's kind of how we approach it is I, I look at it as making it simple out of the box to work and you, you can take the coverage where you need it. Right. Another example, uh, these are in, in areas that are, you know, have wide fields. Maybe they have outdoor, uh, big outdoor extensions. They have uh, a number of buildings uh, and trees uh, that sometimes can cause shading and interference issues, but they need to be able to penetrate that. Well, you can take a mobile nest node. Uh, you can put it on a trailer, uh, for example, have a uh, and put it out where you need it. And it can be fully self-sufficient, even on solar uh, for power. It's very low power. And so there's some really innovative things that they're that we're seeing producers do with with the private cellular solution and and including that mesh uh, being able to move it and take it where they need it going back to craig you know when we look at you know all these technologies uh, first of all networking itself is not easy uh, you folks you know uh, of course in today's world every company has to be kind of tech company or software company we cannot survive without being but you know these things can be complicated so talk a bit about how you know DXC is kind of making it easier for you so that you are still focusing on your core business and not depleting a lot of resources into these technologies how they are making it easy for you yeah uh, good question and good topic um you know, I'll start off with, uh, particularly in our industry, like a lot of industries, um, in order to get to that point where you're a vendor, an approved vendor with a large corporation, in our case, these are large food suppliers. I mean, that is a feat in itself. So what we look at and again, what got me very interested in G, uh, GXC is the fact that deployment from an installation in an ongoing service aspect is very well simplified. Now, what I do believe also with a lot of our large food supply customers is they have that capability. They have that IT capability um, due to the fact that we're dealing with a lot of different um, pieces of information. Um, we live in a world, especially with animal rights, biosecurity, um, which are all areas that we really touch upon in our business. But that data and that information is very sensitive. So not, not only for JBI, um, absolutely, if we can be a um, installation and service support side of it, we want to do so. But I already know that a lot of these uh, big integrators, these big food suppliers, that data is so sensitive that they don't even want a, an approved vendor in some cases to have access to it by any means. Um, you know, when we first started hearing about all the craziness of, um, you know, holding data, shutting down networks and holding data at ransom on those networks, one of the very early on ones was Pilgrim Pride which really is the large, globally, is the largest poultry producer in the country, in the world. Um, in the United States, they would be number two behind Tyson. But um, there's, they, they had a um, hacker attack and it virtually crippled their network. And they came out publicly and they, they paid a sizable ransom. Um, we know in our business dealing with rural uh, personnel, and when I talk rural personnel, I'm talking in the middle of Alabama, in the middle of Mississippi, and the back roads of Louisiana, when Pilgrim had to take the initiative and shut down their network completely because they were under attack, um, it affected that field service technician, that feed mail, that little operation. It affected them 
in order to do their job. And let's face it, part of their job is to, um, you know, um, raise those chickens in, in that example and provide animal welfare and provide feed consumption and whatever. So I go back to the basis of your question, the simplicity of how GXC, and I spent a lot of my time um, with my background and my knowledge really looking at that. Okay, is this going to be complicated? Because if it's going to be complicated and it's going to be extremely costly to deploy, because reaching a lot of these rural areas, you know, they're not just like down the street. So there's a cost for deployment. And um, I think G, uh, GXC is right on the money. I think they, for the market we serve, I think we have a very good um, return on investment and low cost investment overall. Oh, Sean, I'll come back to you. Uh, he was talking about some of those things, which is like uh, security and sensitive information. When you serve industries like these, uh, how do you also ensure security, cybersecurity? I don't know if there are any compliance issues as well there, but you know you are kind of the gateway there. So talk a bit about uh, uh, the, the security aspect. As he was mentioning, uh, you know, an issue with the uh, cybersecurity and, and you know attacks. Um, you know, they're using uh, uh, you know holes in a network, right, to be able to access that data. A lot of times, that data is traversing over uh, public networks or uh, you know uh, available networks today. Um, but I'll tell you how we we address it. Think about a cellular solution where everything remains on site. Nothing leaves the premise of the farm. You have an on-site server. All of the data that goes from a device goes through the core. The core resides on the server. The server resides on premise. So you actually never move that data beyond your, uh, that resides all behind your firewall. Okay. Um, that's something that, uh, that uh, you know, Wi-Fi tries to do. Um, they, they put stuff behind firewalls, but guess what? You can always do a Wi-Fi sniffer, right? You can see what's there. And if somebody really knew what they were doing, that's one thing, right? Um, they, could, they could try to get through that. The second, say, the second thing is with cellular, um, you know, there's inherent encryption uh, already there. Uh, you can't access a network without an encrypted, uh, a hard encrypted or soft SIM, that uh, that can be used when you access and use the private network. You can't see it, you can't uh, sniff it, uh, it's there. And even if you try to get on, you're not authenticated, you have no idea what that is. And so the data stays there. Um, it doesn't traverse over you know, the, the, the cloud per se, right? It's your own. And um, that is just two aspects. I mean, there's many other things that is enterprise ready to be integrated with other encryption methods and things like that on our server and our core. Um, but really that's, that's the two main things is that it's, it's just, you can't, you know, you, you have full control and um, it's very secure because it's yours and it doesn't leave. The data doesn't leave. Sean, Craig, thank you so much for taking time out and talk about this. And Craig, I really love, you know, the way, you know, you, you talked about the challenges that are there in the rule because, you know, it's not just a specific industry, but there are other industries also. So thanks for sharing uh, your use case there. And uh, Sean, thanks for sharing how you are helping uh, industries like these. I love the discussion. I would love to have you folks back on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks a lot for the invitation. Appreciate it.